this and seeing famine in Sudan, we would not be in this room. Without this person, Islamic people wouldn't exist. So without further ado, I'd like to call Dr. Hadley and Dr. Hansen. Alhamdulillah, Ustazah wa Rasulullah. First, I correct you. Come next to me. <laughs> to be corrected in front of everybody. No person has the right to claim the creation of Islamic relief. So all of us have done it. You could be far more bitter than me before Allah. You got it? Yeah. I didn't tell him go. <laughs> Order, huh? Look at them and don't giggle. <clears throat> Will you let her go? Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. Now you go. Thank you. I was in Bosnia for 10 days with Islamic Relief Canada volunteers. 19 people came from Canada to live for a few days with the orphans of Bosnia. Travel all the way to be with the orphans, to live the issue of the orphans, to draw the smile inside the hearts of the orphans, not on the faces of the orphans. When we were leaving, everybody was crying because they felt that they were living in a different world. When we were with them, they forgot their parents are not there in life because they had new parents. This is your role, to draw the smiles or to inscript the smile inside the hearts of people, not only orphans. Will you stand up for this challenge or not? Yes? yes. That means that you can't stand. Yes? It's number one. Number two, I was remembering my first visit to Bosnia, 10 years before the Bosnia war. I was a young medical doctor, 1982. On the way back to Egypt, I was thinking to spend the holiday in place in Europe, but I was looking at where is Islam in Europe. On the map, I found Yugoslavia, and I found in Yugoslavia at the border some mosques. At that time, I took my flight as you go, you go, you, you go air, and on the way back, I came, landed in Belgrade, then Sarajevo and Zagreb. And in Sarajevo, I saw the beauty of the culture and the mosaic of the faith and the culture in this area. But I was informed by young students like yourself that who are living in tyranny, we cannot breathe as Muslims, and most of the Muslim leaders are in jails, including Ali Aiza Begovic, the late president of Bosnia. This is where, for the first time in my life, to know something new Bosnia without understanding that one day we'll have Islamic relief. Then the information came on and on and on and on to educate us. We were the first to educate not only people in UK, but people in the Muslim world, as well as others, about the case of atrocity and genocide and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia. When 1992 came, Islamic Khalif was nearly seven, eight years old, and we responded swiftly to three major disasters at that time. For the, uh, Sudan flooding, 1989. Then Iran earthquake before any mosque or any Husayniya or any Shia stood up for the Iran earthquake were Islamic Khalif. 
Then 1991, cyclone in Bangladesh. As Allah was trying to prepare Islamic relief for Bosnia. And really, my first visit, I understood it that it is, it happened because Allah want a Muslim organization to be responding to the genocide and the ethnic cleansing in Bosnia in 1992. So I have to correct the history, sister, that actually Bosnia visit was the first to let us to have Islamic leave. I'm going to call some ladies so I can stand next to them. <laughs> Amara, Iman, Aida, Rania, and Maha. I said the names, you have to come next to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 come on. Your daughters, your daughters. Come on. Come on, Iman. There's Maha too. Maha, yes, I said Maha. 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 Take her by the hand. I'm not going to speak unless you come next to me. All right. Yes? She's coming, okay. Why I'm standing next to them? Because I want investment. I want the highest reward for my life. I want to see the future. I want to leave legacies behind me to lead the future not only of a little ghetto or society or community or nation but of humanity and this will happen if we invest in the human capital that's why i was very happy to see you young people getting the award and they're excited to do all this great work so this is the future that we need to invest in not in properties, in assets, in land, but in human capital. It's number one. Number two, while I was in Bosnia, why I wearing this flower on my jacket? And two, on, two people only wearing it. What are the two people? Wearing the Bosnia, come here, come here. The people are wearing the, the Srebrenica flower. How many people? Only two. This is not a good sign of the quality of us, of not knowing such a flower. The white color is peace. The green color is hope. And this flower has been made after the genocide of Srebrenica, where 9,000 at least people have been killed mercilessly after the Dutch unit of military what do you call it, peace, uh, peacekeeping forces, left the city to the Chetnik of Bosnia to kill them mercilessly. Two days ago, we were in Srebrenica, where they were burying 33 remains of 33 individuals. They discovered these remains 24 years after the genocide and the massacre. This is not less to what happened to our Jewish brothers and sisters in the concentration camp, in the Nazi concentration camps in the 40s. We should stop it happening to anyone, anywhere, by anybody. Never to happen again to Muslims and to non-Muslims. In, in Europe or outside Europe, never ever. And this is your role. Because you live long after I die. So you carry the message and you'll take the leadership of humanity. Yes? Yes. yes. She's standing up for it. Maha. <laughs> the 
This is the message from Bosnia. I will talk about one or two stories. A story of a young widow at the age of 27 who had three children, a baby, age seven months, and a young boy and young girl. And she had to travel after, after, after 70 members of her family had been killed mercilessly. She had to walk at the time for days to come to Sarajevo, to cross a tunnel for nearly less than one kilometer, 800 something meters. This tunnel was less than two meters, 1.3, 1.4 meters, wide 1.5 meters. With the three children, people were suffocating when they were crossing this tunnel. She came to work as a cleaner with the three children. Many jobs she have done to raise her children as a widow. But you know what? She promised her husband after he was killed and telling him, I am going to bring your children in the best way that you want them to be. She managed after that to buy the land, to build the house, and to build the farm, and to take 17 loans over the last 17, 18 years from Islamic Relief to do all this. And every loan was repaid back before its end, the time. And now she has a doctor, a dentist, and another two children, grown-up children. And she was fulfilling. <laughs> this is for her, not for me. This is for her. This is for her. Don't clap for my voice. I talk about a woman who stood up stronger than many men, who speaks, who gave exciting speeches, but do nothing like myself and others. 70 people died. She never gave up. She never uh, bent her back to atrocity or genocide. She never defeated by the challenges she was facing. This is the one which each and every one of us love to be like her, including the men in the room, the young people in the room, the ladies in the room. Many stories like this in Bosnia. Many, many, many. That's why they were defending us while we were sitting, living comfortably in the middle of a stable, peaceful Europe. This is the message from Srebrenica to all of us. Next year, I'd love to see all of you there. Srebrenica is nothing less than the Holocaust. Keep it alive to prevent it happening to any nation, to any race, to any religion, at any part of the world. And this is our duty as Muslims, to be walking on earth like Quran, behaving like Quran, following the footsteps of Muhammad wasallam, And be proud of it. My advice, young people, don't follow the fashion, but create the fashion. Don't follow the fashion, but create the fashion. Don't follow the fashion, but create the fashion. In Andalusia, the whole of Europe were following the Andalusian fashion. The fashion of science and technology, the fashion of morality, culture, the fashion of dignity, not the fashion of chicken and something funny. We are not funny people because we have been following the teacher of humanity. Our fashion is to educate humanity. Our fashion, our fashion is to stand up for humanity. Our fashion is to prevent atrocity and genocide and, and merciless behavior of people in humanity. Not in a code of dress or in a hairstyle or a backdrop trousers or belly button 
uh, trousers, whatever you call it. Anyway, whatever. You got it? This is my advice to myself. I could have been the same like you when I was young. But now, because there's a lot of things that are happening globally, and you have to stand up and be dignified by the teaching of our Prophet Sallallahu and we let, we let people to follow us, and they should follow us. They should follow us, because the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not like anybody else. Ibrahim السلام, came for the word of Tawheed. Only Tawheed. Nuh السلام, came to save only the few believers on earth. And they took them with him in the boat, as well as birth of each animal and birth and creation of God. Musa السلام, came to save the Israelites from the atrocity of the Pharaoh of Egypt. Limited mission. All are limited missions. And Jesus, peace be upon him, السلام, came to save the lost children or uh, what do you call it? Yeah, the lost children of Israelites. Khraf Bani Israel. Even though the lost sheep of Israelites. The only one who came to save humanity was Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Was the most comprehensive message. To spread justice, peace, love, caring, sharing, and showing humility. And protecting the dignity of humanity. And keeping the integrity of every human being, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. So be, look at the difference. And when you have the fashion, you create the fashion that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves. And his companions loves. And Allah loves. My last message to, to myself, never ever to let anybody to put you down to demoralize you, to demean you, to let you to feel that you are nothing, nothing, never, at any time, at any place. Always rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always keep learning, learning and learning. Don't stop being learning. Education is a success story. I want you to become a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Yes? 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 yes. yes. Okay, all the time. Yes? 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 yes. Why not? In science, technology, arts, drama, history, architecture, everything. Excel! Excel, excel, excel at every subject, subject you are specializing in. The conclusion is, Prophet Sallallahu said that two, the days of the Muslim should not be the same. Tomorrow should be better than today. Today will be better, should be better than yesterday. The least we can make is to make today and tomorrow the same. But this is not a fair, this is not a success. This is like you say that, what do you call it with static? Is, yani, becoming uh, stagnant, stagnation. Stagnation, stagnation creates swamps, not rivers, not oceans, huh? not seas. Don't be a swamp all the time. Keep developing yourselves and developing the community. And the only way to develop the community is by bending your back to the lowest and the least and the furthest and the weakest among the members of the community. No matter who they are. No matter who they are. Their ideology, their race, their background, their religion. Because we have sent Muhammad to be a mercy for humanity. 
and you are the follower of Muhammad. You got it? I'm banking on you. <laughs> okay? Seriously. To conclude, Brother uh, 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 Tifu. <laughs> Tifu, his name is Tifu. Uh, it was said there. Well, because he became a director, you don't be calling Tifu? I Tifu you. Come on here, come on here. And this brother here, who was actually sacrificing his time in Ramadan, come in. Please. Shabir. Shabir. Shibu, huh? <laughs> you know Shibu? Shibu, you know Shibu? Is your wife here? No. No, I feel. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> what's the word? What's the word? <laughs> Can the girl look at him and see if he fits? No, come in, come in. Where are you going? I know you and your father. Come sit. You see, he looks good, huh? <laughs> Sisters, huh? <I'm... laughs> now you compete for him. Who is the first one to bid for him? <laughs> In the 80s, we were crazy. We were always crazy. <laughs> you know what? We wanted to tour UK in the month of Ramadan. And we made what we called at the time Ramadan caravan tour. Caravan tour. Okay? And from the first day to the last day, we were on the road. Every day in different city, and in each city, three or four or five mosques. To distribute leaflets, to sell books and things, and talk about Islamic relief. Every day, every day, those people who started at the very beginning never saw their family for the whole month. From Ramadan 1st to Ramadan 28th. So Shibo, be like them. And I hope that the one amongst you sisters who are going to accept him as a wife to encourage him. Of course. Of course, well, you're not standing here for nothing. <laughs> uh, he will accept her. <laughs> but let her to, to come forward, inshallah. Are you, are you happy? Yeah? Now, I'm talking about the future. I'm standing next to my colleagues and my leaders and I don't care if I die now because I'm happy to be here seeing all of you believing in what you're going to do and following those leaders because they are going to make the history and change the history and maintain and sustain the good history for humanity. And the one who will announce this award is Shibu. <laughs> Come on, where is that? Shibu! 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 Oh, stand now. Yeah. The fill, the fill, the fill. The fill. Yeah. Okay. Come on, uh, uh, Zia, Zia. Yeah. That's for you. Where are you going? <laughs> the winner of the Dr. Hani Albina Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, oh. Sorry, she's going to do the Is it okay if I take a look? You're gone. No, 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 no,
And in this case, especially when it comes to responding to crisis and helping those in need, this great woman steams her head, dragging, dragging the whole family with her, as women should. Going back 32 years, shortly after Dr. Hani had founded the organization, these two individuals embarked, embarked on their journey with Islamic Relief. They sponsored an orphan through our fledgling orphan sponsorship program, and from there, they never looked back. By the time their children were at the age of 12, they too were attending Islamic Relief events, handing out pens and leaflets, and selling spare pens to raise funds for any cause that they were fundraising for. Fast forward to 2019, and this dynamic duo is still committed to the cause. Year in, year out, they never miss an IR event and never let an opportunity to save a life pass them by. Every Ramadan, they gather their entire family and have together raised hundreds of thousands of pounds for a range of causes. True examples of life savers, mashallah. Can I ask you all to please stand and give a huge round of applause to the winners of the Dr. Hani and al Tvel, tvel, tvel. Anything. 
no reward, nothing. Probably sitting there, I don't know, watching the cricket or something. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing that anyway. <laughs> but in this blessed environment, you know, we just we were at an Islamic lecture this morning. I encourage you to keep going to Islamic lectures. You know, there's something in there. You know, if if you know if you show mercy to people on earth or to the creatures on earth, Allah will show you mercy. I mean, I mean. No, and Allah will show you mercy. I guarantee you that. Every single one of you, I learned something. Never give up. Never. Anything is possible. Of course, Nobel Prize winners, of course it's possible. You know? We're Muslims. Nothing is beyond us. You believe in Allah, nothing is beyond us. I, I tell you, nothing is. There was another saying, I, I don't mean this about me, but one of the things that I, I saw was a poor man with a good heart. This is where it's going to get to you. I'm an office worker. What right do I have to be standing here in front of a doctor and such a hundred people? You know, you don't need anything in life. You don't need a penny to stand here. I, most of you stand here after 30, 40 years. You just got to get to my age. <laughs> and you'll be standing here with these sort of people. You know, all I, all I ask is, when you get to Jannah, just remember us. Just remember us. Amen. Safa. Safa. Look at the recording from there. <laughs> Safa. She's your daughter? My daughter. Come next to me. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm your new father. <laughs> and, and, uh, my, uh, and my mother daughter is not here, my son. You know, nothing could be done without the family. Of course. Nothing it's about your father. I, you know, sorry, I don't mean to go on. I, I, I honestly mean it. You guys are more important than us. We've done our time, like Dr. Hani said. We've done our time. You know, I, I please keep in contact. N I L Y A S five seven at gmail dot com. I Okay, can I just say something? The first woman in Islam was the backbone of the Prophet ﷺ was his wife. So, so women in Islam were taking a part of the leadership, even half of the leadership, from the very beginning. From the very beginning. Khadija anha was his lover, his wife, his supporter, his advocate, and promoter, and lobbyist for Islam from the very first day. The first martyr of Islam was woman. Again, Sumayya. So when anybody tells you Islam came to make woman object, tell them, get L-O-S-T. <laughs> Other religions and other philosophy before Islam were treating women like objects, like chairs, like an instrument. That's it, nothing. But liberation of the soul and the spirit and the value and credibility of women came with the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. wa sajidat ila akhiri equality. Even you take more than he takes. Because while he is doing the da'wah work outside and you are suffering at home doing the cooking and all these sort of things, you are taking your share 
and half of his share. So he come out with 25% and she got 75%. <laughs> Big investment. Let him keep going. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.